When one thinks of the Mafia in 2023, they are thinking more about the portrayal of the Mafia at their all-time high when they were outright making people disappear, bombing cars and going on shootouts in the middle of the city. Considering all of these events happened and were a big part of Mafia culture, not seeing these might lead people to believe that the Mafia has completely been eradicated from our society. Still, just because men like Pablo Escobar and Al Capone don't exist anymore does not mean that the Mafia went away with them. They simply have adopted a more down-low version of activities that they they continue to carry out regularly that bring in close to a whopping $120 billion. What does the Mafia actually do? The current activities that are carried out by the Mafia are more of those which do not attract a lot of attention. The quieter activities of the Mafia include crimes like gambling, prostitution, fraud, loan sharking, hijacking, extortion, bribery of high-ranking government officials, and racketeering. Some of the louder activities conducted by the modern-day organized crime family, the Five Mafia Families of New York, a popular name in the world of crime have been accused of crimes relating to the manipulation of Wall Street. Traditionally, the Mafia, also known as La Cosa Nostra, has engaged in a wide array of illicit endeavors to maintain its power and wealth. Extortion, racketeering, and illegal gambling have been central to their operations. The Mafia has exploited the vulnerabilities of businesses, demanding protection payments in exchange for shielding them from harm, an offer that establishments often can't refuse. The main Mafia activities that happen in New York now are crimes that are a blend of both old old-school mafia business and the use of new-age technology that is used to feed off of vulnerable people. Businesses like supplying drugs are something that never dries up as a source of income. The mafia still smuggles drugs and takes them to their final consumers on the street by using something as inconspicuous as a pizza parlor as a front to sell drugs like cocaine and heroin. The modern age of organized crime has replaced the classical movie vision of a bunch of mobsters in a back room of the casino with a much smarter model of gambling with offshore servers where gambling is legal. The bank accounts the Mafia uses are also based offshore, so the money which has been accumulated using illegal means never sets foot onto U.S. soil directly. In the book Codes of the Underworld, it is said that protection racketeering is still a very lucrative business for the Mafia in places where there are highly volatile government environments or not enough means of government protection when it comes to some secluded neighborhoods. The protection racketeering business is also still a very profitable source of income for the Mafia. How it works is a business will register itself under the name of a private protection agency and start the business by creating a need for protection by hiring thugs to go after small businesses and destroying their supplies or stealing their supplies and offering to protect the businesses from the thugs. Some stores that are under the protection of the mafia might also become a front for their other illegal activities, such as drug supply or money laundering. The owners of some stores are tempted with a cut from the money made with the said activities. All the businesses the mafia owns are interlinked and create a demand for each other with the basic demand rising from human wants. The want for illegal narcotics creates a gap that the mafia fills with its supply of drugs. The addicts search for a place where they can gamble, and they come across the mafia-owned websites with virtual casinos set up offshore. Lose enough money in both gambling and drugs, and you have to go to the loan sharks to acquire enough resources to fuel your vices. While the mafia around the world has changed in the last few decades, there is still the stigma of old Italian men with huge families carrying out dirty tactics in New York, and the five families of New York are still thriving, although much less compared to their history, Bonanno family. The Bonanno family is one of the oldest crime families in New York and traces its origins to the 1930s. With a lot of power grabs and even a Fed infiltration in the 90s, the Bonanno family was staring at its end until the coming of an extremely efficient boss in Joseph Big Joey Messino. Joe Messino was quite effective in calming down the family and changing rules to help the Bonanno family regain their lost pride. However, However, due to extreme pressure by the feds on mafia families, the Bonanno family also had hefty losses. In 2003, Joe Messino was arrested alongside his counterparts and faced the death penalty for seven murders and racketeering charges by 2005. This led him to become the second boss of a mafia family to become a rat and wore the wire to record one of his conversations in jail. Let's not forget that Messino had to take life due to one of his most important counterparts, Salvatore good-looking Vitaler adding him out. After this, Joe Messino helped the FBI in recording his conversation with the new boss, Vincent Vinny Gorgeous Basciano, who took the lead after the arrest of Messino. Pretty confusing, right? Well, the Bonanno family went through a whole phase of decimation from the 2000s till 2013, when a new face came around. Michael the Nose Mancuso, who was with the family since the 80s, but lost his position after getting captured for killing his wife and serving a sentence of 10 years. In his rise to the top of the Bonanno family, Mancuso also had fierce opposition.
position, mostly coming from a guy named Camerano Jr. who was the more obvious choice in the 2013 polls. Again in 2017, the family decided to elect a new boss, and this time, Camerano Jr. was the first choice. Sensing this, Mancuso took quick action and shelved several members of the family including his own father-in-law. Fast forward to 2022, when an old-timer Grimaldi, who used to be a capo in the Bonanno family, died, and his funeral turned into a battleground when Mancuso ordered some of his men to give Camerano a beating. However, as he later found out, the funeral had some motorcycle gang members who stood up for Camerano and even took the upper hand against Mancuso. This incident brought a lot of shame for the Bonanno family, and you would think how far they have fallen in the current times. As of now, Mancuso is still trying to force Camerano into a corner by organizing several drive-by shootings, but there seems to be no backing down by Josie and his crew. In 2023, it seems even clearer that the family is struggling with low income and a no-violence policy due to the constant FBI supervision. In a recent case, nine members and associates of the Bonanno and the Genovese family were arrested for racketeering and unlawful gambling while operating out of several posts in Long Island, including a soccer club, a coffee shop, and a shoe repair shop. During all this, the other families are tired of the continued violence under Mancuso's reign and are trying to get rid of him. However, Mancuso has other plans as he is trying to extort from shelved members, including the son of Grimaldi Joe. As per reports, Mancuso is asking Joe for a large sum of money in exchange for his position back and stopping the violence. With the Bonanno family being headed by such a power-hungry individual like Mancuso, the days seem to be short as it struggles to make enough money in the current times, with most of its operations being under scrutiny by the federal authorities. Colombo Family The Colombo family was started by Joseph Profaci in 1928 and is the youngest of five families in New York. The Colombo family, earlier known as the Profaci family, has gone through a lot of blood in its several transformations over the years, with three different internal wars tearing down at its operations. In the 1991 war between Orena and then-boss Persico, the family lost most of its manpower and was on the verge of being dissolved with most of its members behind bars. The war started when Persico found out Arena was trying to replace him as the boss of the Colombo family, after which Persico ordered a hit on Arena. After evading the gunman on June 21, 1991, Arena set out to take revenge, and what followed is horrifying. The war lasted seven months and saw 70 of the family's members getting convicted for crimes, and this reduced the family to a mere 75 members. During the war, other mafia families were also affected seeing several members get caught. Seeing the resulting losses, the Mafia Commission was planning on dissolving the Colombo family and distributing their resources among other families of New York. After the war, the Colombo family was reinstated with the help of the aforementioned Bonanno family boss Messino. The charge was again given to little alley boy Persico, who transferred his position to Andrew Russo, who got acquitted just two years after getting the position. The murder of underboss William Wild Bill Cutolo, an arena supporter at the behest of little alley boy Persico, further fueled the tensions within the family. Seeking vengeance, Cutolo's son collaborated with law enforcement, wearing a wire to gather incriminating evidence. These revelations ultimately led to Rico to indictments against Little Alley Boy, resulting in his guilty pleas in 2000 and 2001. In the years that followed, the Colombo crime family continued to face legal troubles. Thomas Tommy Schatz Gioeli took over as street boss, but he too found himself behind bars. Ralph DeLeo, operating from Boston, assumed control but was later charged with drug trafficking and other crimes. The family's leadership carousel continued with Andrew Andy Mush, Russo taking the reins. However, he and other high-ranking members were charged with various offenses, including murder, narcotics trafficking, and labor racketeering. Some pleaded guilty, while others wore wires, providing critical information to law enforcement. In 2021, the Colombo family had 11 members indicted when the authorities found out about their extortion practices with the labor union in the state. This two-decade-long operation included controlling the contracting and union business, as well as marijuana trafficking and loan sharking. In 2022, the Colombo family received a fatal blow to its position in the mafia with the death of Andrew Russo, whose funeral was attended by 100 mourners in Brooklyn. Even in 2023, the Colombo crime family remains entangled in criminal activities. Associates and members have faced numerous indictments, including charges of money laundering, racketeering, illegal gambling, and extortion. With no current boss at the moment, the future seems unclear for the Colombo family who once ruled New York with an iron fist. Faced with the loss of its major members and many notable members in jail, we can only wait and see what this mafia family will be up to now, as there is no sitting down in the crime business. Gambino family next up, we have the Gambino family who have been one of the oldest mafia families in the history of the United States and were pivotal during the early days of structured crime. At its peak, the Gambino family was the strongest mafia family in all of America.
America and printed money like water with its head soaring high. After evading murder attempts by other families in 1964, Gambinos made sure to weaken the other families in New York. Just a few decades later, the Gambinos family fortunes diminished quite significantly to a level no one had thought of before. This happened after several regime changes and assassinations that weakened the loyalty and trust in family members. When Peter Gotti got arrested in 2003, the leadership was again transferred. To Gotti's rivals, mainly due to most of Gotti's loyalists getting arrested, this led to Michael Mikey Scars de Leonardo becoming an informant along with him being shelved by the family under suspicion of stealing the family's money. De Leonardo was an important man in the Mafia families, mainly due to his leadership of Gambino's white-collar activities, and thus he could provide information about all the families. In 2008, the Gambinos were hit with another major setback due to the FBI's Operation Old Bridge, which led to the arrest of 54 members of the Gambino family with charges such as murder, extortion, drug trafficking, and robberies. This operation actually stopped a major alliance forming between the Sicily Mafia and Gambino families. One of the men arrested, Frank Cali, came to the USA as an ambassador for the Inzerillo crime family and later became the boss of Gambino. For several years afterward, the Sicilian mobs had taken control of the Gambino family. They started making the family business transnational with the setup of a drug ring responsible for shipping half a ton of cocaine from South America to Calabria in Italy. The Gambino family didn't stop here with continued control over different labor unions, drug trafficking, and extortion being carried out in several areas of Brooklyn. With heads soaring, it felt like the quiet before a storm for the Gambino family, and the suspicions came true when Frank Cali was shot dead outside his home in Staten Island by an individual gunman. The incident shocked the authorities as the man responsible later testified that he mistook Cali for a deep state figure and killed him due to his hate for the right-wing politicians. With the death of Frank Cali, Lorenzo Menino became the new boss of the Gambino family. The constant Fed activity continued with several arrests carried out in 2019, including the arrest of Anthony Pandrella for shooting a 77-year-old loan shark in his home at Point Blank Range. In July of 2019, major members of the Gambino family, Thomas Gambino and Rosario Gambino, were arrested for alleged connection with the Sicilian Mafia when they were caught on video speedboating through the coast of Palermo while meeting ranking members of the Inzerillo clan, also known as the aristocracy of Palermo's Mafia. In a major development in the same year, 11 associates of the Gambino family were arrested as a result of a year-long investigation, which included wiretapped cells, surveillance, and even installing hidden microphones in offices where these mobsters work. These recordings brought forward some horrible facts. In one of the wiretap recordings, a member of the Gambino family is heard saying that he had a fight in a diner and had stabbed a kid like 1,000 times with a fork. Along with this, in another defendant's home, the police found brass knuckles and a long knife covered with blood. Major names in this investigation were Andrew Campos and Richard Martino, both titled as Rising Stars of the Mafia by John Gotti. Richard Martino was a white-collar crime genius who had once orchestrated one of the, if not the largest, consumer fraud of the 90s, worth close to a billion dollars. Andrew Campos had a similar list of crimes under his name, with several wire fraud and money laundering schemes worth millions of dollars. He was arrested in 2022 for non-payment of taxes close to a million dollars from his carpeting company by paying the employees in cash to avoid payroll taxes. Currently, Lorenzo Menino is heading the family, and the feds believe that business for the Gambinos is still thriving with millions of dollars coming in from a variety of criminal activities, like extortion, racketeering, drug trafficking, and fraud schemes run by members of the family and other associates. Genovese family fourth on our list is the Genovese family, popularly known as the West Side, who have dominated the organized crime circle in New Jersey and New York City for close to a century. Being the oldest and largest of the five families in New York, the Genovese family was originally known as the Luciano family before the leadership of Vito Genovese, who named the family after him. The Genovese family had complete control over the docks on the West Side and the Fulton Fish Market and used these areas as their bases for several criminal activities. The Genovese family is without a doubt the most dangerous of the five families, mainly due to their members following the Omerta Code, which follows non-cooperation towards the law authorities and emphasizes secrecy, something most other families have suffered from the lack of. It is a popular notion that members of the mafia have a habit of gossiping about plans in diners around the region, a major region for law authorities to set up surveillance. In fact, the Genovese has only had 11 members to this day who have helped the authorities. The most influential leader of the Genovese was Vincent Gigante, who once held the title of Capo di Tutti Capi, the boss of all bosses. Gigante was one interesting character, often called the Odd Father for his behavior. In his prime, Gigante used to roam the streets of New York in a bathrobe while muttering to himself to avoid any surveillance. He also used to keep at least one member in his house at all 
times so the feds couldn't bug it. Gigante even evaded arrest for years with his family and advocates telling the court that he was mentally insane while being charged with conducting frauds worth millions of dollars, several murders, and even killing mobsters who dared to stand in the way of the Genovese. Even in prison, Gigante maintained his role as the top order in the American Mafia, and he finally died in 2005 after decades of ruling the New York Mafia. As expected by many onlookers, there was some decrease in the power and influence of the Genovese family, but not to the extent of others. Daniel the Lion Leo became the boss of the family in 2006. He was in and out of jail for a few years, but still held control over the family. According to estimates, the Genovese family boasts around 270 made members, solidifying their status as a force to be reckoned with. Their power and influence extend across major cities like New York, New Jersey, Atlantic City, and even down to Florida. The Genovese family's continued devotion to secrecy has allowed them to maintain their grip on power. In fact, even many of their own associates don't know the names of family leaders or fellow members, making it incredibly challenging for law enforcement to gather intelligence. Over the years, the Genovese family has faced numerous legal battles and law enforcement crackdowns. In 2016, Eugene Rooster Onofrio, a reputed capo, was accused of running a multi-million dollar enterprise involving bookmaking, medical scams, cigarette smuggling, and illegal firearms. Other members of his crew were convicted of extortion and other crimes. In 2018, Ralph Santaniello, a suspected acting capo, was sentenced to five years in prison for extorting a Massachusetts businessman. The family's reach extended beyond traditional mafia activities, involving illegal gambling, loan sharking, and racketeering schemes. The Manhattan and Bronx factions, known for their historical power, still exert significant control within the Genovese family. Capos like Bolomo, Muscarella, Cirillo, and Dentico are influential and play crucial roles in the family's administration. While the official leadership remains uncertain, law enforcement believes that Liborio Bellomo is most likely the current boss. In recent years, the Genovese family has faced a series of high-profile indictments and arrests. Members and associates have been charged with various crimes including racketeering, extortion, money laundering, and labor racketeering conspiracy. Vincent Esposito, the son of former boss Vincent the Chin Gigante, was arrested and charged with racketeering, conspiracy, and other offenses. The investigation uncovered unregistered weapons, millions in cash, and a handwritten list of American mafia members. From multi-million dollar swindling schemes to extortion and obstruction of justice, the Genovese family continues to be entangled in a web of criminal activity. Their illegal gambling operations spanned across Queens and Long Island, and even involved joint ventures with the Bonanno family. But despite the constant scrutiny from law enforcement, the Genovese family remains a formidable presence in the underworld, adapting and evolving to protect their interests at all costs, which is why they still have a large force in 2023, with millions of dollars flowing in from extortions, wire fraud, and real estate projects throughout the country. Lucchese family. The fifth and last entry on our list is the Lucchese family, known for its relatively peaceful nature among the five families of New York, and was very secretive about its operations in the beginning. Originally known as the Gagliano family, it controlled operations in the territories of the Bronx, Manhattan, and New Jersey. With the death of Tommy Gagliano in 1951, the leadership shifted to Tommy Lucchese, who was an underboss for over 20 years. Lucchese brought the family to the top of the American mafia with his effective use of coalitions with other mafia families like the Gambinos. He also had control over New York City's booming garment industry and used several stores as fronts for his illegal endeavors. While the Lucchese was still considered a peaceful crime family, all of this changed with the onset of Victor Amuso, who took the city by its throat and started ruling with an iron fist. Victor Amuso, paired with his underboss, Anthony Casso, ordered murders at every chance they got, eliminating anybody who got in the Lucchese family's way or even looked down upon them. In fact, the duo had taken several cops under their payroll with a major help coming from NYPD detectives Louis Apolito and Stephen Caracapa, who carried out several murders under their command. Overall, it is believed that Amuso and Casso carried out over 40 murders by their hands and ordered over a hundred more to be carried out by the members of the Lucchese family. Finally arrested in 1991, Amuso was given a sentence of 455 years, effectively making it a life sentence for the feared criminal. This beatdown by the feds had scared the Lucchese family out of their wits with many members of the family turning into state evidence at any chance they got. With the feds running down the family's members, the situation got to a point where their acting boss, Alphonse Darko, became the first boss of the five families to become state evidence. Darko led the police to the entire family hierarchy, and even Casso had to become a witness for the FBI. In this shakedown, the feds managed to decrease the Lucchese family by half, with several other members on the run. However, don't think of this as the end of the Lucchese's, as Amuso still managed to control the family operations while locked
locked up. He used Joseph DeFeed to become the acting boss of the family, and business sure was booming. DeFeed, along with Stephen Cree, managed to earn $40,000 to $60,000 a month from the city's garment business, and upwards of $50,000 annually from construction and labor racketeering business. However, DeFeedy got arrested just years after getting the charge, which put Cree in charge. Cree managed to rake in much more money than before, which led to Amuso putting a reward on DeFeed's head. In the years that followed, the Lucchese family is still thriving with several operations going on at the same time. In 2018, an indictment was issued against Lucchese soldier Anthony Grotto and Lawrence Fat Larry Trenies for forcefully getting 230,000 oxycodone pills from a doctor. The case also stated that they went as far as stabbing the doctor to make him obey, and Grotto was recorded by the feds telling the doctor, if the pills go in anybody's hands besides mine, I'll put a bullet in your head. The Lucchese family, as any other mafia family, have loan sharking as a major source of income, and in 2018, a Lucchese family soldier, Dominic Capel, along with nine other associates, were arrested for carrying out loan sharking operations, generating over $1.5 million in revenue annually. The police identified 47 victims of the loan sharking ring with interests that were as high as 200% per year. In May 2019, a major incident exposed deep secrets about the Lucchese family due to the cooperation of John Penisey, who revealed the current leadership and description of the crime family. John Penisey revealed that the Lucchese family operates with seven factions, two in the Bronx, two in Long Island, one in Manhattan, one in New Jersey, and another in Brooklyn headed by John Castellucci, which was also Amuso's old crew. In a letter from jail, Vic Amuso instructed underboss Crea to make Michael Big Mike DeSantis as their acting boss, replacing the Bronx leader Matthew Madonna. Amuso was strict in his instructions, going as far as forming a hit list if anyone from the Bronx faction didn't oblige to this change. As of now, the Lucchese family seems to be laying low, but their business is booming with several gambling rings, loan sharking operations, and extortions making more than enough for one of the oldest crime families in the USA. One could argue that organized crime has actually diminished in recent years. With the advancement of stringent laws and heightened enforcement efforts, criminals have been forced to adapt and find ingenious ways to evade capture. It's a cat and mouse game where the authorities tighten their grip and the underworld strives to slip through their fingers. Love interesting stories like this where we delve into the how and why of the cartel business? Then make sure to like this video and click on the card shown to deep dive into the world of crime.